Hey guys, Mr. JW here. I uh, wanted to go over some things that have been asked a lot in the recent days with all the changes that have been going on in terms of me and my channel and DOJ and Oceanside RP. And I just want to clear the air once and for all um, so that you guys have a reference point to go back to to understand why all this happened, um, my experience in DOJ, and what you guys can expect going forward. So let's talk about that. So let's start a little bit with the history of me and the DOJ. I joined the DOJ back in 2015. To be exact, October 18th is when I got my full member status within the LC DOJ. Now this is back in the day when we were still rolling on GTA 4 and uh, still had the lobbies where you had to get an invite on Microsoft Game Center or whatever it was called and uh, it was completely broken um, but it was a lot of fun and uh, it was my second ever community that I joined. The, the first community that I joined um, was something that I was probably just in there for less than a year and uh, I didn't really get anywhere with that and that kind of died out so I so I left it um, I don't think it's around anymore but I don't know it could be but regardless that's neither here nor there on this video but I wanted to talk about what happened in my experience in the last five years of DOJ um, I guess it's been a little over five years now um, but we'll talk about that here where when I joined it was a much simpler time to, to say the least the application process didn't require essays or paragraphs on paragraphs of information for a video game um, apologize for the voice cracks there and uh, it was so much easier just to get in and and play um, than it is now it's it can honestly be a huge struggle for people looking to apply because DOJ is this exclusive community for the quote unquote best of the best type that uh, we always try to portray. Um, back when I joined, it was a, like I said, it was a simple application. After the application process was a simple interview process to make sure that uh, you had some basic motor functions and you were not somebody that uh, was gonna, you know, come in and cause a problem right away, really. Or that to make sure that you had a microphone that worked and that, you know, you weren't gonna be like staticky or something or whatever on the radio. And it was, I, I can't imagine, I can only imagine that it's 1%, like comparatively between then and now, it's like 1% of the effort to get into DOJ back then is as you have to now. Um, and it's insane for a video game to have that much effort you need to put into just for you to have some fun, make some friends, and learn something new maybe along the way. Um, in my time in DOJ, I rose through the ranks and I became an FTO, became an FTO lead at one point even, and got all the way up to Deputy Chief of Police for the Los Santos Police Department in DOJ. During my time, I originally joined under Nick M, the former Chief of Police, police who retired, and then was led under the instruction of Chris W, another former Chief of Police. For the LSPD and DOJ. Doing through the ranks there, I I felt like I was held back a lot. Um, I don't know what the, all the reasonings were for that, but I did feel like I got held back through the ranks at periods of time um, without real clarification as to why. I don't want to blame anybody for that because I don't really know the exact reason behind it and I was just I was just never awarded that information um, but I saw people 
passing me in rank that were doing the same thing I did, and I didn't feel it was right, but that's nothing I could do about that. As I went up in the ranks, I tried to help with policies and, and set up things that to help curb some of the issues that were happening in my time and to come up with new fun ways to do things or a ways that were more efficient to do things. I have never been a huge fan of having tons of paperwork and forms and things you have to fill out that aren't related to the game at all. Um, and DOJ has an astro astronomical amount. I don't even know if that's a word, if I'm saying that right. But uh, a, a ginormous amount of paperwork on the back end. And that starts with your very first day, a patrol log. Um, and it, it, only goes, it only gets more as you go up in rank. And I, I think that's ridiculous, personally. I, uh, I wanted to join because I wanted to have fun. I wanted to roleplay and wanted to make friends and hang out. And as I rose to the ranks, I started the motorbike unit in the Los Santos Police Department uh, when I was still under Nick M, the, uh, the first chief of police that I was under. And uh, we started that from the ground up, and I put a lot of time into that, and I feel like it, it turned out really great. Um, I don't know if everybody agreed. I, I tried to hold all the guys that were under me to a pretty high standard when it came to roleplay and realism in game. Um, and I, that was something that I carried through my ranks, is trying to be as realistic as possible while also having fun at the same time. Uh, eventually, when I was an admin and uh, deputy chief of police, which was the fourth in command at the time for the LSPD, it got to a point where I was essentially asked to step down. Um, my understanding of really what led to that was because I didn't have enough free time for what was expected of me, I guess. Um, that I was expected to turn DOJ into a job, essentially. And, and that I wasn't active enough in this and that. And, um, and there was even accusations of of disrespect um, from me towards other members and I I wholeheartedly disagreed with those with those claims of disrespect because I I don't feel like I've ever really intentionally disrespected somebody um, I've always been very kind as much as I can be um, and try to choose my words as best as I could um, I know sometimes I was a little sarcastic, and that kind of brushed people the wrong way. You know, people didn't like the sarcasm. They wanted to be serious all the time, and and it wasn't about fun. It was about, you know, just trying to be in control, and that's not what I was there for. I wasn't there to micromanage people and make them do things a certain way because someone else wanted it to be done that way. Um, it didn't make sense, and I didn't agree with a lot of policies that came out in DOJ as a whole. Um, you know, I don't have any specifics to, to mention on this, but it's something that really bothered me over the years. To have to enforce policies that I didn't believe in, and I know others didn't either. Um, you know, I, I would have conversations with people that they would agree and with my opinion on these things and uh, have the same kind of mentality and thought process on some of the things that happened. It wasn't, it wasn't something we had any control over, though, because these instructions came from the top, and there was no if, ands, or buts, and you just had to get it done. So we did. Um, but in DOJ, 
it always felt like there was always somebody trying to stab you in the back to get ahead of you. Um, you know, the, the stepping on you to climb up the ladder type feeling. And that was a lot of what DOJ was and kind of still is. Um, you know, it's people that want to get other people in trouble just to make themselves look better. And I don't think that's right. You know, I mean, like, if people are making a mistake, okay, let's let's correct the mistake and, and move on, you know? Um, but in DOJ, the mentality is punish people, you know, belittle them, uh, make them feel stupid for what they did. That was a lot of the mentality in DOJ through my time there. Um, and I saw that firsthand from a lot of people. Um, and it was very disheartening, you know. After I was asked to step down from admin, I was, I was given a position as captain within the LSPD. And I served for a time as captain. Um, we, uh, basically just told everybody that I stepped down, but it really wasn't a step down by my choice. It was something that was forced upon me with, uh, with, without choice, <laughs> essentially. It was either I can, I can step down and, or, uh, I could retire, you know? And so I didn't want to retire because I, I love DOJ and I loved being there with, uh, so many of my friends. So I stepped down. I stepped down to captain and did my work, did what I could to help still. Um, but eventually it came again. It wasn't enough. Still wasn't enough. I wasn't putting all my free time into DOJ. I wasn't making this a second job on top of the two other jobs I had in real life. You know, outside of this channel even. And it was very disheartening. To, to have that kind of thrown in my face that all the effort that I put into DOJ um, just wasn't enough at the end of the day. Just wasn't enough. So it eventually came to a point where I was asked to, I was given two options. Join the media team full time. Or retire there wasn't even a there wasn't even a demotion really to be had um, it was move it was to move out of the LSPD for the most part or leave and uh, that was hard to hear um, so I chose media I had already been in media for since like the very beginning of my career in DOJ. I spent years, um, I think if I remember correctly, I think it was like, I have, I've seen the date before, I think it was September 1st, 2016 was my first DOJ video. So I had been in for at least a couple years at that point, um, doing media. You know, a few years in DOJ and at least a couple years in media as a, uh, as a media member and I was I was basically for forced into that so when I chose that I wanted to really refocus my time um, it was a discussion I had with with people um, that I don't I try not to mention names of for incidents in this video but it was a discussion I had with certain people that um, it encouraged me that this would be a better option for me because they knew I had a passion for, for content creation and for being on the media team. So that's, that's where I went and I spent my time as a full-time media member for a while until eventually, um, I was lucky enough to be promoted to media ambassador when the spot opened up. And that put me back into a staff position within the DOJ. And it let me help uh, mentor and 
and provide more assistance to people and help shape the media departments within DOJ. Um, something I had I had kind of been trying to do the whole time, but this kind of really gave me a foothold to kind of really get in and try to make some change um, where, where it felt necessary, you know. Going through DOJ throughout the years, towards the end, it I just felt myself dealing with a lot of depression. Um, I wasn't having fun in patrol like I used to. I wasn't... I wasn't feeling welcome as much. Um, it felt hard for me to want to get up and, and play DOJ, you know? Every time I'd get on DOJ, it, it felt like I'd have to watch over my shoulder, um, watch what I would say, who I would say things in front of, because they're going to go and try to get me in trouble. And, you know, because people just, I don't know, people didn't like me. Some people didn't like me for whatever reason. Um, I attribute part of it to being in media. And I don't really know what else would be the cause. Maybe my positions over the time is, is what people, you know, cause people to try to try to get me in trouble because they wanted to take my position or something. I don't know. But um, it led to a point where I didn't know who to trust myself. And it felt like anytime I wanted to try to make a friend... I would have to really be guarded um, before I could even entertain that possibility because I didn't know if something I had said to express myself to be truthful in front of somebody would turn out to turn around and bite me in the ass and I had seen it done so many times to so many other people that they, they trusted the wrong person in DOJ and it, and it got them banned, got them in trouble. Um, people were forced out of DOJ. I had many friends that, that had left before or were banned for various things, um, some of which maybe I didn't agree with, but nothing I could have done. And I lost a, lost a lot of my friends in DOJ over the years maybe I made friends with the wrong people I don't know I felt like the people that I befriended were the people that I could be honest with the people that I could openly express my opinion and them not try to twist it into something that it wasn't um you know, because it wasn't it wasn't a matter of oh, this needs to change, um, you know, right now or something. This was it was like I don't agree with this, and here's why. And and you could you could easily end up in a staff office for disrespect because you disagreed, and uh, it was it was not a fun environment, not a very like welcoming environment. It felt very hostile a lot of the time. And when when a lot of the people left DOJ in uh, the late end of 2020, I saw the final people, some of the final people that I had really become good friends with, um, finally stepping away. And while I don't know all of the details of why everybody's leaving, um, I knew it was at a point where the people that I felt I could trust, the people that I enjoyed the most time spending the most time with, were leaving. And I didn't know how much I was going to enjoy being in DOJ. 
obviously there's always a chance to make new friends but and i did i did make some new friends over the years and i still have some friends in doj but it's it's not the same as the people that i've known for for years um that were in doj and uh when i when i saw an opportunity to start something new i i looked into it um you know, I, I wanted somewhere, I wanted to go somewhere where I could feel welcomed, where I could have a positive environment, not have to feel like I'm going to get ambushed over every little thing that I do, and then I have to watch every step that I make. Leaving DOJ and joining Oceanside RP was, was a hard decision. Um, probably one of the hardest decisions I've made in my, in my gaming career, in my online career, um, because I made so many friends and I had spent so much time, um, in this and put in all of my effort and, and passion for, for roleplay into this community. And to basically be throwing it away um, was a very hard decision for me. But it was a decision that I ultimately felt was necessary. I wanted a fresh start. And I knew that it wasn't going to happen in DOJ. I didn't feel like I'd ever make it to admin again in DOJ with just the culture and with the people that were in the positions that they were in that I just didn't have a shot of ever getting that again um, and so I decided it wasn't it wasn't worth continuing for me and I wanted to start something new where I could enjoy myself where I could have fun where I could make new friends and I can use the skills that I've developed to try to help other people. Um, those skills in roleplay, in technical know-how, in content creation, in anything else that I'm able to help somebody with. That uh, I wanted to be able to do that and and be welcomed to do that. So I decided that I was going to help Oceanside RP start their media team from the ground up. And I uh, joined over there and me and uh, Samson, formerly known as Officer Solo, are now building the media team for Oceanside RP. And... Honestly, it, it feels like the gang's getting all back together. You know, a lot of the people that I stopped talking to for a period of time kind of came back into my life. Um, and it, it just feels like a whole new experience for me and a whole new chapter in my life. The transition period so far has been uh, very smooth actually um, and you guys have been an enormous amount of support in this and I can't thank you guys enough for all the support that you've that you've offered me uh, during this time especially and it was something that I dreaded this transition period because I didn't know what was gonna happen big change in in terms of the channel in terms of my role play choice and where that was going to be um it was a risk and i'm glad that it's it's working out so far and i hope it continues to um we've got we've gone with great strides already in oceanside rp and the the future only looks bright for us and I can't wait to share that with you guys 
so you guys can all see how great this new community is going to be. Uh, how great it is. So we are we are still in fairly early stages in all of our development and we are building up a lot of processes and procedures and restructuring things. Um, we don't want to be a copy of DOJ. We want to be something new. Something that we think is the best option. Um, and I, I guess that, that happens with everybody that that goes and leaves and, and starts up their own thing, but and I feel like the team that we have will be able to make that happen. So I look forward to many more years of giving you guys roleplay content in GTA 5 and whatever may lie beyond as well. So I thank you guys for all the support. And if you guys are interested in checking out Oceanside RP, I'll have a link down in the description below. It's my personal referral link. So we can we can actually track to see um, how many of you guys come from me and uh, how many of you guys come from Officer Solo and, and various other aspects. So um, I'd appreciate it if you guys are interested. Use my link. Uh, it doesn't actually give me anything. It's just, just a numbers thing we'd like to know. That's all. But... Uh, if you guys are uh, excited for the future, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe for more content because we're going to have some new stuff coming. This is going to be a new chapter, a new adventure, and I can't wait to share it with you guys. That's all for now, guys. I'll see you next time. Have a good night.